the food that you grew up with will form a part of who you are. I try to cook food that speaks to me in the moment. I have the worst sweet tooth ever. I could wake up in the morning and eat chocolate for breakfast. A lot of people think it's, you know, you're, you're Chef Michelle or you are Chef so-and-so, but, but you, you're a person as well. You're a mom, you're a friend, you're somebody's daughter. Gone are the days of screaming and shouting and there's still, there's still firmness because we all need a little bit of firmness, but you need to have grace. I'm Michelle Turan and this is my secret sauce. My first food memories is definitely um, spending time around a kitchen table at my grandfather's house with my grandmother. I can remember as a baby being picked up by my grandfather when I woke up and he used to have a strawberry patch. So I would literally sit in the middle of a strawberry patch and eat until my whole face was red. We grew up with home cooking and you felt the love in that home cooking and, you know, spending time together, laughing and just being together. And I think that is what, what sets the tone for the way I cook today. Eating around a table, being social, that kind of is where the hospitality bug bit. When I saw how happy it made people when they eat your food and, you know, they make it a part of their memories, I think that's what really made me want to be a chef, cook food for a living and be part of people's memories. I'm such a fan of, like, Moorish, whole-cooked foods, like traditional breadies. Italian food is, it always speaks to my soul. And then, again, I'm going to take it back to the desserts. I'll, I'll eat a whole bowl of tiramisu if I really can. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite an active person. I try to, to live healthily, so I get just excited over a bowl of beautiful oats as I do a fresh plate of fresh fruit. Most fine dining dishes will have you ooing and aahing, but I think something that, that you put in your mouth that makes you think of home or makes you think of mum, that's the, that's the ticket for me. My home ec teacher, this is going to sound crazy because, I mean, I was still a child then, but she was probably one of the people who taught me how to have grace. Grace with, my t with the people that I work with, um, even from a, a, a classroom perspective. And then another big mentor for me was Heta van Deventer de Blanche, who actually I worked with at La Mat. I met Michelle in 2008 um, when she applied for a job at a restaurant that I had in Paul. Obviously, I could spot her talent from a very young age. She was multi-talented. She couldn't be promoted any further in a, in a kitchen where I know she worked. And she decided, well, then she'll make a plan. So she'll specialise in pastry. She was not a pastry chef. She specialised so well in this pastry section that she was um, well known for being a pastry chef. But that is Michelle. She will not take no for an answer. I don't think it's in her vocabulary. Michelle is extremely proud of who she is and where she comes from. She 
does not pretend to be or want to be anybody else. Um, she's happy in her skin, and I think she's happy and proud to be a South African, happy and proud to cook South African cuisine. My food philosophy is actually very simple. I want to be to cook humble food, I want to cook real food, and I'm very much into sustainability. My food should speak about my personality. She brings honesty, simplicity, but a, a certain form of gratitude, celebration of life to the table. values at the end of the day is what's always worked for me. I believe in integrity, being humble, um, you know, taking people with you um, wherever you go in a sense of a bit in a professional way, teaching them things. Can you do me? Make it three. Make it three. Chef Michelle is one of a kind. She teaches you, she leads her team and she really, she's always there for you. Haas and Wine Estate was bought by Dr. Mark Follishen in 1994, and it was really close to his heart to um, create an estate where people can come and experience not only Russian, but also South African hospitality. We're very proud to say Arsenal is a fusion between South African and Russian cuisine. And that's very unique. It's a very unique style of cooking. It's something totally different, something that people are not used to or haven't seen before. I can totally understand why she can blend two cuisines because she goes into the background, she studies it, and then she makes it her own. Chef Michel's love for South African ingredients and cooking is contagious. So how she takes South African cooking and Russian and brings it together, it's, it's really an art. Current menus at the moment are quite interesting because it actually keeps it fun um, because we've got our beer garden, which is like a contemporary um, open fire cooking. We've got the deli, which is bistro style, um, all the breakfast items. We offer amazing picnics on the lawns with an amazing view. And then in the avant-garde restaurant, we also offer jazz nights, which is very fun, beautiful ambiance. We've got the tea, we've got the homestead, we've got conferencing, and the list goes on. So it's about, in total, seven to eight kitchens. I cannot actually imagine what a challenge it must be to be in charge of seven kitchens. What makes it so exciting is that we take South African ingredients, South African recipes, and we actually combine it with Russian um, recipes and the ingredients that we can get, like beet beetroot, obviously, that is readily available here. And we do contemporary versions of Russian and South African cuisine, which makes it super interesting at the end of the day. Russian palmini and salmon. Second set of venison, chicken valentine, beef medium rare, dessert, Napoleon, shortbread Fabergé and apple charlotte. South Africans love seafood, so um, but so does the Russians as well. And potato is actually a big um, ingredient in Russian cuisine that not a lot of people know about or speak about. So we use some um, squid ink to color half of the potato black and some turmeric to color half of it yellow. And we did a beautiful terrine with um, lightly smoked mussels and it marinated in a curry sauce. So you've got the potato as an element from Russian cuisine and you've got the seafood that, that our South Africans love a lot. And we actually uh, produce vodka on the farm, which is phenomenal. We 
also like to incorporate art into our food. So we've had chocolate eggs made that symbolizes the Russian Fabergé egg. And we just incorporated some nice South African flavors in there as well. Everybody likes a good tea time or a high tea. We had the idea to make a high tea Russian style. It's very colorful and very um, authentic. What is very special about the Russian tea is they put strawberry jam in their tea instead of sugar. So we combined again a lot of Russian elements, a lot of South African elements to the food that we serve with the tea. And then we also have the whole story that we tell that surrounds the, the whole tea experience that people really, really enjoy and really sets us apart. So in the centre here that you see there, all the Russian samovar. Samovar is a Russian boiling urn. purpose of the samovar is to keep boiling water at all times in the teapot itself. I love Hazendal for the fact that it gives you the space to be super creative. Um, if you have an idea, you can really live it out and it keeps you super busy. There is no way that you can get bored on this estate. You really can't. I don't really see myself as trying to distinguish myself. I found that if you are just authentically yourself, and you really push to do what you want to do and, and, and believe in what, what your philosophies are, then you kind of get set apart automatically for, for what you do. I've definitely witnessed and been a part of kitchens where it's, it's hard and you, know, you are see, only seen as a good chef if you shout and scream and degrade. That was the background where chefs grew up. You, you know, it was aggressive, it was masculine, lots of swearing. I am happy to report, I think, the, the general kitchen culture that most chefs, um, I think, run these days are not that anymore because it's, it's, I, I honestly feel it's not cool. She has a way of influencing those around her very positively. Oh, I lied, I lied, four. Can I give you another two, please? Lies, People are going to hear you if they trust you and if they respect you, and that does not come from shouting or degrading or demoralizing people. You know, you can push Michelle, and um, the young chef could push her and test her um, patience, but then. One day, you push her too far, and that little scorpion tail comes out. And then, as we say in Afrikaans, straat. Niemand praat nie. It's just impossible for her to be everywhere. So she has employed people that she trusts and which basically works the way she would. There's a certain dynamics in a team, in a, in a chef's team. You become more than just colleagues. You have to, you work side by side, you know everything about each other. And I think that's who's available, who's at that stage there, and that's how you put your team together. It's not a random act. You put a team together, you build a team. We always have a brief in the morning. She will be um, telling us more about what's happening all around the farm, so everybody knows what's happening. Corporate function, um, it's 22 people. We were giving them the day package for lunch and then we're doing the dinner the evening. So let's just go through that prep and make sure everything is done for that. And then jazz festival, Wednesday, please. You need to, to really take people from the ground up and assist them because if I didn't have assistance or mentors in my life, I would not be where I am today. So I think we've got a, a responsibility as chefs to, to not only um, teach cooking skills, but teach the skills of how to deal with pressure, how to deal with difficult situations. I've seen her work with lots of young chefs coming through her kitchen and she, no, she, is, she has a very nurturing personality. Chef Michelle has made me the chef that I am today. Through her teaching and leadership and mentorship, she has made me to become a confident young chef.
I'm sure that there's lots of young and older established chefs that um, are grateful for her mentorship. We are very proud of our team, consisting mostly of women. The team is very strong and there can sometimes be a little bit of a thing, but we sort it out. We work very nicely together. Choosing a predominantly female team happened totally organically. It's, it was, we actually noticed it and we just started laughing. It can be quite tricky sometimes, I will not lie. Um, a, a team of women can be very feisty. She has opened doors for a lot of younger women following in her footsteps. She has set the example, you can be feminine, you can be a lady, you can be graceful and still be a fantastic chef. The few guys that are here, shame, <laughs> they, they are totally outnumbered. <laughs> I've learned that by making people accountable is actually the best thing because as soon as you make them feel accountable for what they are doing, they realize that every single thing that they are busy with has a direct impact on achieving all the goals that we need to achieve. Our team of chefs get uh, rotated very often. So most of us have worked in different departments and know exactly what goes on in that department. As long as they know that they have to have accountability for their job and their integral part that they play, you get the most out of people because they know that what they are doing is important. They can feel it. Going through the whole COVID situation together as a team, I would say made us a lot stronger. We learned how that in life, what is important. I think COVID gave a big eye opener to most chefs and the entire chefing and restaurant industry. I see a plate of breakfast, with the same respect, I look at a fine dining plate that's got foie gras on it. You cook from the heart, you cook what, what makes sense to you in that specific time. That's more where I'm at, at this stage of my life, to be honest. Let's just be super honest today. Things go wrong many times, but I think it's also how you choose to handle those, those things that go wrong. Chef Michelle has very good disaster management skills. It's like she can see exactly when something is gonna go wrong, and then she says, okay, now wait. You go to the guest, you say you're super sorry, this happened, and then you do it properly or offer them something else. I'm taking it like really to the, the, the food to table level now. We do have people in the industry that, um, I love it, they call themselves foodies. And they, they just, you know, come in and judge you on your food, judge you on everything, um, just because they feel the need to. I've had guests that literally took a, a portion of meat in their hand and walk to the kitchen and throw it down on the counter. I think the important thing is to, to make sure that if you are in the wrong and you did make a huge mistake, to try and rectify it as in the best way that you possibly can. Um, and I think integrity and honesty play a very big part there. She makes a mistake or allows somebody else to make a mistake and move on. My personality is very humble, so I try to cook what, what inspires me, so obviously seasonal food, beautiful produce. She respects the ingredients, so, so I think for a gra any great chef would say that ingredients is the most important, that's the most important part of everything. 
Chef Michelle loves to use fresh, sustainable products. She knows exactly which ingredient or which garnish she wants to put on that plate. The food that I produce um, will only be as good as the people who supply me at the end of the day, people I can rely upon. We are very lucky to have on the farm a beautiful harvest garden, so we can use um, seasonal produce from that, which is very, very nice. She's got a very persuasive character. She will definitely speak to the head gardener and make him plant what she wants, I'm sure. We use a lot of the indigenous South African ingredients to decorate our dishes. Everything you can think of there is in that garden. <laughs> I'm very bad. I tend to not follow trends. I keep up with them, but I try to kind of walk to the beat of my own drum as far as possible. Um, I think that's what kind of gives your food your personality at the end of the day. It's always nice to receive an accolade or be nominated for an award because it makes you feel good as a person, not only a chef, but um, honestly, for me, this is, that's not what drives me. It is always nice to have recognition, but I know that Michelle focuses on different things, um, and to her that doing a great job is more important than getting an accolade. I'm happy to see restaurants full of guests that are happy. I'm happy to see kitchens full of chefs that are inspired by what you teach them. Um, if an award originates from that, it's a, it's a bonus. For my legacy wonder, I can only hope that people will see me as a good mentor that I can inspire young chefs to go into the industry guns blazing and reaching for their dreams. My dream and what I want to reach, I think there's always more. There's always more, there's always extra. I think there's always a new challenge. There's always something more exciting to hopefully achieve here and to build upon. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens in the next few years. Mm -hmm.